Welcome to WetPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WetPixel, and we'd like to thank Aquatica for sponsoring this episode. Aquatica do a range of housing supports, um, arms, and some other excellent underwater, underwater products. And please head on over to aquatica.ca. They're based in Canada, so aquatica.ca to check out what they do. I'm joined today by my fellow contributor, Alex Mustard. Good morning, Alex. Hey, Adam. How are morning. you? Yeah, all good, thanks. Yeah, excellent. Um, you're looking very tanned. Have you been away? Um, I have been, actually. I'm wearing the, although it's green screening on me, I'm wearing the T-shirt from my Cayman workshops well, that I was running at the beginning of the year. So, yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Travel is coming back. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, thought, obviously, there's been um, a range, of, a, a plethora of exciting new mirrorless cameras released. Um, so we thought we'd try and give a kind of roundup of what's going on. Um, a lot of these actually are that new that, that, that they probably haven't been shot a great deal underwater. So so we can only kind of give a, an outline of specification. So so please don't think that this is any, any kind of review of them because because neither of that have actually used them as far as I know. Have you, have you used any of them, Alex? Um, no, none of them. Um, no, none. None, none of the ones that have been out. I was hoping to shoot the, the Z9 in Cayman, actually, but the housing wasn't out in time, which I think is not a bad thing because I think, you know, these are cameras that I think will last people a long time. So they don't need rushed housings. They need really good housings. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, so maybe, maybe that's a good place to start. Is obviously the, the, in October last year, um, Nikon released the Z9, their flagship mirrorless camera. Well, announced. I think they're just still in the case. Oh, they're still, still shipping. Still all this time yeah, later, right. still yeah. struggling to ship them. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a bit. It's a bit like um, you know, people used to complain back in the old days about housing's taking a long time to be developed for cameras. <laughs> it seems like the announcement and then the actual producing the camera seems to be the problem these days. Mm. Um, but obviously, top line specs. It's a, it's a full frame mirrorless camera. Um, it has, uh, I'm just checking the resolution because I can't remember what it is. Oh, it's um, similar to the D850. Yeah, so it's, it's 45.7 megapixels, yeah. so 48, 46 megapixel camera. Um, obviously, it's a mirrorless camera. It's not a, um, and um, Nikon boasts that it has their highest performing autofocus, uh, the, the phrase is ever. So um, that's an interesting development. But, uh, you know, I, I hate to get all skeptical straight away on these things, but what we found with all the mirrorless cameras, even you know the Olympuses when they first announced the EM5, that was touted as having the best autofocus of any camera ever, yep. because in one measurable way it was. And yep. I think there's still quite a lot of that going on. And certainly, you know, when you read the reviews of these things, what you shouldn't re what you should read is not the review of the new camera that's coming out, but what the new review says of the old camera. Yeah. Because when the new camera comes out, everyone tells you, oh, this is the greatest thing. And then when it's replaced, they, they refer back to the old camera going, yes. And we all found that the autofocus was quite poor on the old one. And you're like, wait a minute, your own review said how poor yeah. it was, you know, a year ago. And now you're telling us that actually, you know, it's now not that good. Uh, to be honest, it's not just camera. I, I, I like reading car magazines. And you always hear the truth about the car when, when it's replaced and they refer back to it in the old review. And it's like, right. you never told us any of this when you were reviewing it for the first yeah, time. I, and I think, again, you know, you need to be slightly wary of the fact that, that obviously it's in it's in the reviewers and the pros and everybody sort of inside the industry, including in the imaging industry, to promote these new models. So, so you know, there's an element of bias that can creep in. So, so I think, yeah, we'll 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 put that one down as that's what they claim, and we'll see what happens when we actually manage to get one underwater. But um, bear in mind that with it's obviously is using an algorithmic based um, contrast phase on chip. But um, to, to be honest, though, my friends who've been shooting the Z9 say it's fantastic. And I don't know if only shot it properly underwater yet, but no. um, I know like my friends who've been shooting it on safari and things like that in Africa, they say the eye detection is amazing. And I was yep. joking with one of my friends who's a Nikon pro saying, you know, how about with leopards? Does it get confused with all the spots? And he was like, <laughs> no, bang on straight on the face of the leopards, you know, um, on Try the eyes minute. and everything. So I think the eye, the eye detection will work really well on fish because fish eyes, um, the eyes of fish, are yeah. much more, you know, both with the, the A1 and the Z9, fish eyes are much more prominent than the eyes of mammals. Yeah. You know, if you can't find the eye of a fish, you know, yeah. fish have got much more prominent eyes than birds or mammals. So yeah. I think it's going to work brilliantly, to be honest, um, with fish. Uh, my, my, and uh, this is something, you know, I, I, the, the whole eye focus or, or specific part focus, pet mm. focus, whatever it is, I, I yes, okay, it's a use, it may be a useful tool, but at the end of the day, I don't really have a problem 
getting high focus with the existing technology. So I'm not sure. No, but if if this works better, then isn't that great? You know, you just, you know, then you can concentrate on getting your composition the way you want it and you trust the camera to get the eye in focus. Now, obviously underwater autofocus is pushed much more to a limit. We're already getting off topic here, Adam, because of the fact that you're dealing in a very low contrast environment. The subject is moving and you are moving. You know, people don't take portraits on land by moving around like this. (laughs) In the surge, yeah. Moving like this. And, you know, so, and when they breathe in and out, they get buffeted. And, you know, so of course, you know, underwater photography is going to push these things to much higher levels than on land. And we, that's why we need to test them underwater. We can't just say these yeah. things are great and they will work. Anyway, sorry, it, I interrupted. You were telling me the specs of the Z9. And I've already uh, derailed the conversation. I think, Kemp, one of the things that it has, I think, that is important for us as um, as an photographer is, is it has a nice big battery. And I think that's that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. I mean, one of the one of the issues, obviously, around um, mirrorless cameras is battery life. So that, that seems to address this. And I think that's, again, that's another underwater photographer specific problem. Yeah. You know, if you're a land photographer, you just have one of your, you know, in your jacket pocket, you pull it out and you stick it in and you carry on. Yeah. Um, whereas yeah. obviously we can't do that underwater. And I think it's it's probably why mirrorless cameras, they've just decided, oh, let's not worry about batteries. Everyone has a spare in their pocket. Yeah. Wetsuits don't have pockets and we can't open our housings. So, I would know. say housings don't have pockets. So, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, is, yeah. it is actually, yeah, well done, Nikon. I know it makes it bigger and heavier, but it's good for us. Yeah, um, it has a very high frame rate, so 20 frames per second, um, and, and you can shoot over a thousand frames. Yeah, I so, think it's a bit so more than 20 if, frames per second. Uh, high speed continuous shooting at 20 frames per second for more than a thousand frames. Okay. Um, and, I think and, it's got a burst at something like 200 frames a second or something. Oh, anyway, yeah. it's all pretty irrelevant for underwater yeah, photographers. Who yeah, cares? Yeah. And it, what probably is more relevant is ISO range of 64 to. Um, sorry, ISO low range of, of 64, so you can dial the ISO down. I, I'd I really like them to just to, even if it's, you know, if it's a low one, that's just a electronic mm. neutral density, so you don't mm. get any benefit to image quality. I wish they'd all put a 25 on them. Mm. Just, you know, it's only a bit of software, mm. and mm. it actually for underwater photography, it's really valuable. Mm. We don't want those low ISOs, obviously, a lot of the time for shooting scenery or wide angle. But for macro shooting, for controlling your ambient light levels, yep. being able to go to really low ISOs when you've got loads of strobe is a really valuable situation. And and, and opening up apertures to um, to get a shallow depth of field yeah, effect, absolutely. so you're controlling so your I, backgrounds. I, you know, and... Low ISO, even if it's electronic, is actually yep. very valuable to us. So yep. yeah, it's yep. a pity that they're, these cameras are, are shifting away from that. Sorry, Adam. I'm gonna... And 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 the, sort of the last space spec, which I think is a bit of a downer, is it has a flash sync speed. Uh, flash sync speed. I can't say it of 200. I, so... I don't understand why the mirrorless cameras are limited in this way. Yeah. Um, but it is a pity. I I hopefully we will see a move more towards offering us faster sync speeds. But I think that the camera manufacturers, they know that they can do their own versions of high speed sync with their proprietary flash guns and yeah. i think they they use this limit on sync, flash sync speed as a way of making you buy their flash guns yeah and yeah, so yeah. it's not in their interest to offer it as a native even though they could which i think is a sad thing yeah. but yeah um, we have now got underwater a number of underwater flash guns that can do high speed sync and that's only going to grow so yeah. um i guess we just have to accept that a bit there's no, there doesn't seem to be any particular reason why the mirrorless technology per se creates a limit on flash suits. I think it seems to be a, a choice of spec. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, a, a I can't see a sort it of physical reason for though, it. It strange that Nikon, after years of making SLRs with a standard of 250th, yeah. dropped this to 200. I don't quite understand why they would change from 250th. Yeah. It almost yeah. makes it a talking point. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. What about the, the, the one, the camera I think I like most is the, I really like the look of the A1 Sony. Yeah, well, that, that's that's obvious because that now has, with an electronic shutter, I think it has a flashing speaker for 400th. Yeah, something, something um, like that, yeah. So, so you know, it's a huge, um, it's, it's, a, it's a 50 megapixel, so within a ballpark of, of the same resolution. Um, it has a claim 30 frames per second, which again, you know, I'm, not not that's overly. great you know good to have but you're probably not going to yeah. use it much underwater it, it has um it, it has um yeah flash seed spink of and uh, it does it does vary depending on the i'm just looking for the specs sorry for the yeah, no worries. Um, 
Um, and it has, um, yeah, dual driven shutter drive for flash sync up to a four hundredth of a second. So, um, so it has uh, it has a mechanical shutter. So, so no, flash sync with electronic shutter um, is is slower, but then it has this dual driven shutter up to four hundredth, which I think you know addresses some of the some of the, the issues yeah. with the Z nine. I don't quite understand what they're saying there. Like whether you can, if you choose to use that mechanical shutter, it only works at four hundred. I'm not sure. I don't. Yes, I yeah, don't. Just don't in that, it. it would be. It seems like a. a anyway, it, it's useful, but it sounds like it might be a bit clunky. To you can't just turn it up a click and it will still work. It sounds. Anyway, we'll. I think we'll you have to. You have to go in and do something. Yeah, yeah. I've heard has, things about the A1's autofocus though. Yeah, it has a. It has a 759 point phase detection and then 425. So those are on chip, obviously. Yeah, phase detection. I, I think the number of sensors. It's basically it's got an autofocus sensor. I mean. Yeah. I don't think the number of sensors are that relevant with these cameras. Yeah. Um, because they're they're looking at the picture and analysing what it is. I think I think it's a good number to to use to to persuade people to buy them, but isn't necessarily that relevant to his performance yeah. um, anymore. Um, so yeah, on chips, I, I there are people shooting this underwater. Certainly, generally the feedback seems to be pretty positive. Um, having said that, you know. I, People are saying things like they can now use it. I mean, Sony have a very good macro lens, the 90 mil, which is an ideal, ideal sort of focal length for this. For yeah, this but type it's of camera. a little bit in between, though, isn't it? It's, it, it's. Uh, I mean, I know you could probably fit a Sigma one to it and everything, but I'd like to see them off for something like a, a 120, 120 as well, yeah. or maybe yeah. a 150. I, I've it's, been using my Sigma 150 a lot on my last few trips, yeah. and really liking it. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to go through love and hate phases with it, where I'll get into it slightly tighter view for a while, and then I'll be like, oh, I'm a bit fed up with that. I prefer sure. the slightly wider view of a 100 or a 60. I think that Sony do need to offer. I think they probably thought, should we make a 60 or a 105, or let's make a 90, Somewhere and that will cover all the bases for the for a while. But yeah, it would be great if they offered a little bit more option on. I think there was quite a widespread criticism or quite a widespread feeling that the autofocus with the 90 wasn't very good, though, with the preceding models. Um, and, and certainly the consensus is significantly improved now with this, with the A1. So mm -hmm. so that would suggest that they've, they've done a, a better job with the, the mm -hmm. autofocus. Um, I bet when those those models were new, though, everyone was like, oh, the autofocus is brilliant with the 90. And I then when the new camera comes out, oh, the autofocus was rubbish with the old cameras. That's <laughs> right, yeah. Now finally it works. Oh, okay. Um, so I do think this is part of the reason, though, that the camera, ma the, the camera manufacturers are happy is that they – because there's there's a lot more headroom for improvement on these cameras. And I think one of the problems with the SLR market is that, you know, we've all got cameras that are so good in every area now, it's hard yeah. for them to produce a camera that makes any of us want to upgrade. Yeah. Whereas with the mirrorless cameras, the fact that things like autofocus, things like flash sync speed aren't quite optimized yet means yeah. that they, you know, there'll be an A1 Mark II and a Z9 Mark II, et cetera, yeah. that will, oh yes, and now we've got the, we can, this we can add these bits. that working better. Yeah. Um, the the um, the um, A1 the battery I, I don't know battery life I haven't heard much in the field I know it's not a terribly big battery um, so so I would imagine but equally I haven't heard that it's got terrible battery life so so which I probably would I, have I heard. I think the Sony's though are dive or two not dive all day still. Yeah yeah yeah. I mean I have a lot yeah. of people with the sevens on the trips and yeah they they battery is something they have to think about. Yeah 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 um, and. Um, the other thing, obviously, that, that that and I guess we should probably introduce this at this point, that it offers 8K video. Now, now neither you nor I are particularly video focused, um, uh, admittedly, but um, certainly I think you know the option of having very very capable video performance alongside um, pretty competent still performance is one that many people will will welcome and 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 it seems that this is definitely a you know a growing trend amongst these cameras so. well I, I think there's there's no doubt if you are an underwater photographer who wants to regular an underwater image maker who wants to make a mixture of stills and video mm. that if you're shooting an slr you're using the wrong gear you mm. know you should be going down these mirrorless routes they've all got amazing video what i don't understand and i don't know enough about video myself is if you're serious into video do you shoot a Sony A1 or a Nikon Z9, or do you buy a Red? You know, well, because, you know, are they really, you know, are they really good enough for the top people and for the TV productions and that sort of thing? And that's what I, I don't know enough. I mean, 8K is 8K, 
but is one person's 8K as good as someone else's 8K? Is you now not need a red? You just use a Sony A1. Or, you know, I think I think, I think the, dogs the, the dogs the dogs sure. well the dogs are t telling you off talking about red in a, in a, in well, okay, episode. Sorry, um, said, yeah. <laughs> um, the the if it was a the, cat using a red. It was, <laughs> yeah, they'd be right with that actually. But yeah, the 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 um, certainly I think um, video performance is, is is a feature that probably is now maxed out in SLR technology. Whether you know if they invested the effort they could get further with, it, I don't know. But I, my 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 gut is that they they realise that that's a that, and that's never going to happen. So so you know if you're if you are someone that shoots in a, in a variety of formats, this certainly is um, a good option. Um, you know, I, yeah, I was actually funny enough. I was at a talk last night with Gordon Buchanan, who's quite a well known. Um, UK wildlife cameraman. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, it was interesting to know, you know, he obviously goes to the background of, of shooting 8mm um, mm. film and then all the way through to, and, you know, he was, he's now increasingly using the smaller form factor SLR mirrorless type bodies just because they can get into places where you can't get in with a, with a, with a red or whatever. So, you know, I, it's, I'm sure there are pros and cons to both. Okay. I, I didn't know the answer to what I was bringing up. Um, yeah, yeah. Canons are a little harder to talk about because they've yeah. kind of approached this with this kind of producing multiple cameras. You know, we've got the, the R6, the R3 yeah. and the R5. Yeah. All from cam, all, you know. So they've they've produced a really sort of fully formed range of absolute, you know, what I feel like they they don't seem to have a flagship in the same way that the A1 and the Z9 are. They yeah. seem to have kind of three, you know, three cameras covering this space with slightly yeah. different strengths and weaknesses. So there, yeah. I don't think we should talk too much about those because they're also. Um, um, I'd, I'd rather talk about the two micro four thirds ones. Well, there is there is a bit of history here with Canon. You know, yeah. If we go back to, to to SLRs, you know, the 5D Mark II was was certainly revolutionary in terms of the fact that the video performance was so much better than. Mm. But basically, again, it was this kind of hybrid kind of. It wasn't a brilliant still camera. It's not a bad still camera. It's not a brilliant one. Um, and certainly, I think the Nikon offerings, for example, at the same period probably were better for still photography. But it had this new option. I think Canon is still trying to do that. They're still kind of throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks and, and, and producing some very competent cameras, but they're less generic, they're more generic and less specific. And certainly things like the R3, which is kind of the the flagship still camera, kind of. But it's, that's and, the lower resolution one. Yeah, it's 24 megapixel, you know, which is an odd decision. I, I, I think that's highlighting that. It's not that it's a bad camera, I'm sure it's a very good yeah, camera. But it's, it really, I mean, it, it's, it's maybe very pro-orientated because... You know, a lot of pro shooters, particularly photojournalist type pros, realize that there's no need for them to be shooting 40, 50 megapixel cameras yep. Yep. Um, because yep. ultimately you can't put those pixels on the page. Um, yep. And, you know, a lot of the time there's still loads of cropping, you know, ability of the 24. And, you know, we've talked on here about a really good 20 megapixel with options like super resolution can yep. cover absolutely everything you ever want without hammering your hard drives. Anyway, yeah. I, I, um, I it, want interestingly. To Oh, sorry, Adam. before 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 I move on, so so flash sync for the for that the 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 um, Canon. R3 uh, Canon is, is a two hundredth for mechanical shutter and two fiftieth for electronic first curtain. So um, and they say one eightieth for electronic shutter, which I presume must be rear curtain. So so they're actually now you've got like a that's a weird and Canon. If you're you, what I want to know about that, and I know you don't know the answer, and I know we're talking about cameras we haven't used, um, yeah. is actually when you're using it, if you're changing shutter speeds. Do you suddenly end up with no flash, or does it switch modes? You yeah. know, if you like, if you are shooting at a 200 and you turn it up to 250th, yeah. does the camera cleverly switch? Or have you got to go to a go menu to somewhere? Menu and yeah, there, yeah, you know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting, interesting yeah. point. Mirrorless. Uh, sorry, uh, Micro Four Thirds. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Because there have um, been two cameras in the last week or so. There has, yeah. So, so, so. The, obviously, Olympus um, became OM Digital Systems, we believe, um, although there's some debate about that, but but, um, but something like that, um, and they've released their It's new... still got Olympus written on the top, though, hasn't it? It has, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how that works. Um, but um, but they've renounced, uh, released their flagship Micro Four Thirds camera, the OM-1, um, and um, that came out on oh, just over a week ago, actually. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and... Um, you know, it's a, it's an interesting camera, 20 megapixel, um, so um, with the stacked sensor, so obviously yes, multiple. I think both of the Micro Four Thirds cameras, the, the OM and the GH6, the Panasonic, 
they're both trying to increase the dynamic range of those systems with cleverer sensors. They're yep. not trying to pump bump their megapixels up. Yep. Um, it's it's all you know. It's dynamic range, a bit more noise performance, that sort of thing, um, and some tidying up. I know on the OM, there's some improvements on the autofocus, but it's not. Uh, it feels to me like it's a a smaller upgrade, but actually might have hit a real sweet spot of a camera. It's yep. not really right. headline figures. But it, it might be one of those cameras that when you start using it, you're going like, ooh, you know, like the like you know, a Nikon speak, like a D810 was over a D800. Didn't yep. seem to be a big change, but actually you picked up the camera and it was considerably better in every area with that. Yep. And that would make sense with a change of ownership of the company. You know, yep. don't make the big revolutionary product, just make a really tidily engineered minor upgrade but i know it, it has changed shape and they've moved buttons around on it so it's not yeah. going into any existing housings no it won't and i think the other thing i think i think i mean i think the micro four thirds area it's a really very well developed ecosystem you've got just about every lens you want yeah um you know there's there's lots of good lens options there's lots of good underwater options um but the issue has always been around, you know, the sensors being smaller, you know, so so it's always going to be a compromise. And that seems to be where the where they're investing the time and effort. Mm -hmm. It's not on the accessory parts of the camera. It's on getting the or trying to tweak as much as they can out of these out of these like smaller sensors. Um, time will tell whether they've succeeded, but that seems to be what they're aiming for. Yeah, so. my two friends who are using them at the moment, they're both, you know, Olympus people. So, um, you know, I mean, you know, pros. So. Um, you know, they 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 they'd like the camera as we all would, but it's hard to know. You know, there's lots of yes, it's focusing really well. Yes, I can see the difference in the dynamic range. You know, it's much better than the old one. But you know, when the old one came out, they were also telling us how the old one was absolutely amazing in dynamic range and you know it was equal to all the SLRs. And and now yep. this one's much better than the old one. But yep. I said, yep. so it, who knows? But yeah, um, the Panasonic GH6 is a bit more video orientated, though, isn't it? As the whole sort of GH family mm -hmm. seems to have been, um, and it seems to be development on that. It's obviously very new, um, so um, you know we're still we're still kind of getting to grips with with what's going on, what what it is. Um, twenty five megapixels, so a bit of a bump in megapixels. So I thought it was twenty five. You know, okay, yeah. 25.2 so you know um 4k video again you know and um, which is that they're going to announce firmware updates which will allow it to to export higher resolution video formats to an external driver i, I don't think that's working yet including raw i think progress raw will be capable through it um so again it seems to be a bit of a bump um in performance um i don't i don't it is video centric as as this whole sort of family has been um and um, in fact, I'm just looking, it's got 5.7K. So actually, it's got higher higher resolution. I bet you can't find any information on Flash Sync. Uh, well, here we go. That's, that's a challenge there. Right. Um, it's got it's got, uh, it's got got image stabilization, which, again, is you know um, important for the video guys, particularly. I, I like using it for some of the longer exposure macro as well on the, yeah. on the micro four thirds. They're really yeah. good for that. Yeah. I, I wish the 60 was a slightly better lens, though. Yeah, it's sharp, just... but it's got such a horrible bokeh. So which lens was that? The Olympus 60 mil macro. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Um, I'm just looking for... Alex has asked me to give me a challenge. Yeah, no, I'm, it's all right. I, I, I'm, I I'm, I'm going to win. It's 250, because the Olympus is nearly all 250 um, yeah. sync speed, just because we're talking about the other cameras. But I, the Panasonic, yeah. I wouldn't be sure. Maybe just 200 on the Panasonic. ISO of, of, of um, 50. No, oh, that's extended, so not native. Yeah, well, um, extended's okay because it's usable underwater without you having yeah. to put neutral density filters on. So yeah. I'm okay yeah. with extended because on, on ISO. Because yes, of course, I'd like more dynamic range as I go lower. But ultimately, if it's if it's hit the maximum and you're not getting any more, but you're not really throwing anything away, extended ISO is is useful for low ISO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am um, flash sync, one two fiftieth. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So quite exciting times. I think, you know, um, there's a whole crop of new cameras, um, obviously incorporating some exciting new technology. It'll be interesting to see how it all works. Um, I think uh, with the exception of the Canon, I don't think anybody's really had those underwater yet. So so looking forward to seeing a crop of pictures with them to see how they go, really. Mm. Um, yeah, I've had yeah. lots of R5s and R6s on my workshops, but I've not seen an R3 yet. So, um, and I've yeah. not seen an A1 um, or a Z9 and then the other two or so this, you know, last week. So. 
I think the the I've seen I've seen A ones I've seen images produced by the A one. It's been out long enough, but certainly the Z nine. Oh, I mean, I haven't seen one in person on a workshop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Z the Z nine is, is 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 hasn't been shipping for that long. So, um. Anyway, exciting times. So, um. You know, we'll we'll keep you posted and we'll let you know if we see any more. Thank you very much, Alex. Um. And. Thanks again to our sponsor Aquatica for sponsoring this episode. Um, we, we really appreciate our sponsor support. Please feel free to add any comments um, in the comment section and um, drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.